Not the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, possibly explore some of the stranger things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and everything else that catches our interest. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro mm-hmm. Mateus, and everyone live. Joining us. Yay. Listen to, listen in to us after the fact. What's new, everyone? It's been a full week. The world's changed ever so uh, slightly yes. since we were last together. Um, the reviews for the NVIDIA 3080s are out. <laughs> and lo and yeah. behold, yeah. <laughs> shock, um, shock Pikachu. They're faster than the old ones. Yay. I think everyone's equally amazed. No one saw that coming. And, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> Although, to be fair, like generational jump between the 2000, like the 1000 to 2000 series, everyone was a bit meh. But with this one, everyone's going, oh my God, so fast. All right. Yeah, being able to game on 4K <laughs> at ultra high settings. Oh. <laughs> I think you need to be careful at night, especially if you have a 10 series card or you might be visited by the leather jacket fairy that will hover over you. It's like, buy a 30 series. <laughs> yeah. I, I really this is how I know Nori is not listening. Otherwise, there would be a leather jacket <laughs> flying at my head right about now. She's got to feel for the bricks first. Um, <laughs> So what's new? We got a uh, quite a sizable show to cut through. I do want to give a quick mention. I've almost got this completely hammered out into a usable state. If you're watching us live on Twitch, uh, we have closed captioning enabled. I thought that would be something helpful, you know, and it's mm-hmm. reasonably accurate. I'm not going to say it's perfect by any stretch of the imagination. We're using the uh, Google API and some trickery behind that to do it in real time so you can watch it like i don't know what they said and it flips out which is the hilarious part but um it is there also i've spent the last week uh, using linux to resurrect a classic a poogie do it <laughs> <Apogee. laughs> I made it all the way through a new episode of Interfacing Linux that's uh, for Patreon. It's currently in Discord in the Announcements tab. If you want to take a look at the video, it'll be posted on Patreon uh, after this afternoon when I get done uploading the shows and all that. But yeah, it's the Apogee Duet from 2007. I wanted to see if it's still usable in 2020. So if you want to go check that out, that'd be cool, man. What's new with you, Jill? Oh boy, I've actually done a lot despite having a sore throat from all our fires here in, in Cali. I've been keeping the air conditioner on with the filter filtration system, so that does help. But yeah, it's it it's been an issue. <laughs> and despite that, I was on Big Daddy Linux Live again, the European edition of one of our favorite online lugs. And um, I'm actually I'm going to be featured on a Linux podcast that will be released soon. So I'll tell you all about that when that comes out. I'm excited about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, over here, I um, basically spent my free time this week clearing out my drawers. Feel free to take that out of context. I love that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, uh, I did the Ikea thing and I have like a, an Alex set of drawers right here. And uh, I have a couple of more Ikea drawers under the TV tv um and yeah no just getting rid of boxes and just general crap that built up uh over the years but i did keep at least one of each cables that may be necessary at some point including dvi vga a dvi to vga adapter and i found two um ps2 to usb adapters one with a male ps2 and one with a male usb so both ends covered um it's uh yeah no it's um i didn't find anything that i'd forgot i had because i knew i had all that stuff there somewhere i just know where it is now (laughs) in the pre-show we were talking about (laughs) you gave it a mention the um you kept the vga cable right oh yeah no i had two vga cables and i tossed one and i kept the the chunkiest one like the the one with the widest cables like yeah you stay (laughs) Did you keep the um, ultra-wide SCSI 2 external connector? 
<laughs> don't have one of those. I don't think I ever had one of those. <laughs> Ladies oh boy, and gentlemen, I, got I might be them. projecting because I still don't know why. <laughs> Let's get right into it, though, because while not necessarily uh-huh. Linux related, everyone's talking will. about it, so yeah. we need to give it a mention. <laughs> Yeah, it will impact Linux, though. So this is huge, huge news. NVIDIA to acquire ARM for $40 billion in September 2021. And uh, that's apparently when the SoftBank, SoftBank merger is supposed to happen as well. So right after that, then NVIDIA is going to take over. And, you know, it makes sense because the ARM chips are very inexpensive and heat efficient. And they're used in all our cell phones and IoT by companies like Apple, Samsung, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation, of course. And they're perfect for NVIDIA's expansion into AI. And that's the real reason why they want these chips. (laughs) And they say they're going to keep ARM open, keep their open licensing model, which is this is wonderful because if they don't, I see Risk Five and its open architecture kind of taking over. But I think NVIDIA will will do what they say. <laughs> so this, you know, this is a good uh, thing. I, I can sort of see <laughs> NVIDIA just doing this. It's like, I mean, we kind of want them for other reasons, but it's also nice to give Apple the middle finger. Uh, so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, very true. But yeah, no, it, it's I know that they're doing this for like the enterprise side, the AI side, deep learning stuff and the energy efficiency stuff because it's harm. Um, but. You know, as a user, uh, some like an end user, I do very much want a new Shield tablet. <laughs> it, it, those were really nice. It's like, oh, two hundred dollars yeah. for like the best price performance ratio on an Android tablet. Yeah, give me. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I'm looking at it, man. It, you know, Nvidia has every incentive to basically allow ARM to continue being ARM. Even Nvidia went so far as to say, hey, this this. We're not going to mess with anything. Of course, you know, initially, embrace, yeah. right? Yeah, we, don't any, we don't want to upset anyone in, in, until we got it. But, you know, I'm not necessarily worried. If you know about ARM, it's you have ARM IP in some device. ARM doesn't make anything. ARM license their IP and they end up in mobile processors and everything you can imagine. But I saw some people wondering, like, well, what, what, what about Apple? What are they going to do? Here's the thing, though. Something you can get from ARM is uh, a perpetual license. So it's yours. You don't have to worry about it. NVIDIA can't come in and go, that's ours now. You can't you know, stop mm-hmm. building an Apple. But yeah, that's the thing, man. Um, you know, that applies to the manufacturing rights with a perpetual license. So I don't think there's anything to worry about. Uh, it's interesting. I think... It'll just stop if Apple decides to try and renegotiate that contract at some point in the future because they want to do something. (laughs) It's kind of the thing, though. Apple definitely has a perpetual license. There's nothing to renegotiate. Yeah, in that case, then, yeah, probably won't affect them at all. (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, NVIDIA buying Mellanox, which, like, curious, and now they're getting hold of ARM. You have my attention. I I want to see where it's going to go. They're yeah. going to become one of those big enterprise companies. Mm. Can, big. We, can we still <laughs> argue about uh, GPUs, though? I'm sure we can. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just making sure. I don't that. think AMD is going anywhere anytime right. soon, not with Ryzen. But um, no, uh, actually, neither is Debian. Uh, The project leader, Jonathan Carter, uh, explains problems facing this key Linux distro, or so says uh, the register. And, well, it is, there was a a Debian talk, a DebConf 20. Uh, You probably remember uh, DebConf, what was it, 2013, 2014? The one that uh, Linus Torvalds got in trouble? Mm -hmm. For some some reason, that resurfaced. What are you talking about? (laughs) That resurfaced recently, but uh, yeah. So uh, one of the things that they were addressing were the problems, and they say it's like Debian is basically a bottomless pit of problems. They have plenty of volunteers. There's like 900 and something volunteers actively developing and another 220 something um 
uh, maintaining packages and whatnot. And it's like, we need more help because, well, the repos are huge, basically. And there's, um, what was it? 61,000 AMD 64 binary packages in the bullseye repos. So, yeah, maybe like 1,100 or 1,200 people is probably not cutting it. And I was with them right up until the point it's like oh um debianites uh, don't like spending money they feel guilty it's like do you know why you feel guilty because you have 1200 people working for you and you're not paying them what? and with a massive economic recession on the horizon there's a lot of developers out there actively looking for a job for a you know a means to get foot on the okay. table by the end of the month i was unemployed for a year that's part of the reason why i moved to the UK, it's complete desperation. It's like, I gotta do something. I gotta find a job. I have to find a way to eat this month. And well, this is what happened. So if you are looking for help, maybe start looking at spending some of that money that you're saying that you have a healthy finance right now and you have sponsors uh, that have said that they will help you. Pay people. So what I'm taking away from this is Debian should move to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> that was an allegory. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, you know, they could really improve their outreach at Linux conferences. Um, uh, for one, they, they always have a really great booth at scale, but it would be nice if they had mini conferences like, like Ubuntu does with UbuCon. That would help a lot. And also with um, getting more diversity, because we, we're, we have greater diversity now at the IRL conferences. But of course, right now in today's world of COVID, um, things have changed, so everything's virtual. But eventually we'll be back to, <laughs> to IRL conferences. <laughs> And um, that should help them a lot. <laughs> I, I like that optimism. I don't share it, but I like it. Um, Someone's got to be optimistic at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to well, have to say, in like the immediate future, you know, things like DevComp, Minicomp, Dev Minicomp, all that, all, all the IRL stuff is blown away. And the reason I sit back and just look at it, like with no investment as to any of that coming back, because you're seeing companies and conference organizers doing the virtual stuff going, this is a lot cheaper. We can save a lot of money doing it this way. And that's why I think that's pretty much going to be in our future. But to speak to having cash reserves, you got to think back to like a famine mentality. You're thinking like, oh, I need to prepare for tomorrow, which I, I understand those feels, Debian. But to Pedro's point, yeah, okay. There's a couple things we've got to unpack. One is there is something to be said to the point of we don't want to hire anyone temporarily because we're going to have somebody working on a project and then that person's going to leave. Then we're going to have to find somebody to maintain it. So the solution to that is to hire some full-time people. Okay, I think that that's easy to fix. Mm, am I, uh, crazy talk yet? No, that is exactly what I was hinting mm -hmm. at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so, it's very good. If you take care of that and prepare for a rainy day, I understand that. But at to a point, if you have sustained funding, yes, I mean that that's something you have to evolve into, and then it's going to be more of a hassle going from. You know, keeping it as, hey, this is a community project and we don't have to deal with all this other nasty stuff. It's going to be in your future at some point, man. I know it sucks. Especially but. if you want to grow beyond the point that you are now, because if you're going to keep having these many packages in the repos and providing what is effectively the base distro for Ubuntu for tons of other derivatives of Ubuntu and Debian derivatives, Linux Mint, um, it yeah you're gonna have to either that or just move to the uk <laughs> <laughs> canonical's already here i, I don't yeah. think they gel <laughs> they are. It, i'm going to give them pool noodles and make them fight it out <laughs> it's gonna be brilliant <laughs> debian your fantastic project i use you we on everything you. in the studio uh keep being <laughs> awesome okay yep speaking of ubuntu though man 
Yeah, speaking of Ubuntu and, and uh, you know, Debian could uh, also hire a community manager as well, <laughs> like this next story. So uh, Mark Shuttleworth said he dropped the ball and is bringing back the Ubuntu Community Council after it shrank to one member, which was himself <laughs> for a while. And, you know, this is great to hear, especially since the community council really serves as the bridge between Ubuntu and the community. And, you know, they um, help support Ubuntu government, governments as well as, you know, conflicts in, in the, between the community and um, the company. So this, this position has been needed for a while. And um, Alan Pope at one time was the Ubuntu community manager way back in uh, 2016. <laughs> yeah, 2014 to 2016. And Joan O'Bacon was uh, the community manager before him. So, yeah, I think I, I really, a, a lot of people have complained that there isn't a good go between, between the community and the, and, uh, the company. So, yeah, I, th I think there really needs to be a, a community manager and it would help uh, ease uh, Shuttleworth's position as well and help him to be able to focus on what he needs to focus on as CEO. <laughs> Reading through Shuttleworth's extensive post, all this will be in our show notes if you're looking for links. Uh, one thing he mentioned, uh, to quote him, he's saying, I watched how the CC members stopped coming to meetings, stopped organizing their meetings, and stopped driving activity. So this doesn't seem like uh, anything malicious or anything to that. It seems like it fizzled out. Yeah. 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 Which will happen. I mean, if you have such a long running project like Ubuntu, yeah, that that will inevitably happen. Though uh, <laughs> one of the replies uh, by one of the participants was said, uh, pointed out a couple of problems that uh, people in the community have expressed, which then the development team has done nothing with and they sort of attributed that to the fact that uh, there is no community council and it was <laughs> uh, the gnome shell is not really a desktop for enterprise users with 10 to 20 years of formed habits <laughs> and the snap subsystem is excessive resource hungry and ineffective for both desktop and server markets <laughs> yes I like this participant I like this that participant like yeah. somebody yeah. Coming out and that. Like, I'm I took a break from yelling at a cloud. He's like, get off my lawn. I don't like change. Change is bad. Here's, here's my thought. How about we get an Ubuntu community spin? <laughs> you know, well, we could do our own here at LGC. It sounds a little bit sideways, <laughs> but it works for Susie. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, although you could make the argument that that's kind of Linux Mint at this point. I could make a lot, especially of with yeah. the whole blocking snaps. Much sense. <laughs> Shut up, Pedro! <laughs> snaps are the future. <laughs> Using cinnamon instead of GNOME three and blocking snaps. It's like, eh, no, that 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 that's Linux Mint. <laughs> GNOME, Pasha. Let's talk about the yeah. best, the ultimate desktop manager available ah. for Linux. It's XFCE. This is from nine to five Linux. Talking about. 416. First look at some of the new features and improvements. Speedy like a mouse. Always happy to see that hanging out in the background. Couple of new things with this. Um, there are going to be some new icons. It's going to be added to all the core components and extend XFCE's visual identity because that's what I'm. And just don't mess with the high contrast themes and icons and we'll be fine. They're going to revamp and improve the about XFC dialogue. Hopefully, as little work went into that as possible. Um, auto hide animations. Okay, <laughs> that's there. As long as that's something I can disable, since I have a very strict no bushy nonsense policy on my desktop. Fractional scaling. That's good. Happy to mm. see that. Something I did yes. see that was kind of neat that I've run into because I move 100 plus gigabyte files around in the studio. Being able to uh, pause file transfers. It's like, huh. So copy and paste, you can just pause it for a second. Maybe you got to do something, something else, and boom. Free that up dark mode for the XFC panel. That's nice to see. Uh, what else do we have? Alt tab dialog. You can set that to only be on your primary monitor. That is how it works in 412, but maybe that's an issue somewhere else. And something the community, for some reason, has an issue with, client-side decorations. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah, one of the things they inherited from <laughs> Gnome 3. Um, okay, Pedro, the, why should I hate client-side deck? I, I don't have anything You know those that, chunky title bars that Gnome 3 has? Yes. The ones that take an un unnecessary amount of space when they could just be a very thin title bar with, you know, the buttons and the title of the window? But isn't that a feature? Uh, I'm sure the Gnome Foundation would like to have people believe that it is a feature. Okay. No one else seems to agree, though. <laughs> you can change that, though, right? I uh, don't know. I, I'm not a big XFC uh, thing, but the, the the thing I did see okay, that I hang did on. like. So it's GTK3, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can disable client side decorations in GTK3. Okay. <laughs> that has nothing to do with XFC, that's... I had, again, that, I, My apologies, I thought Pedro could provide me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that there is a new nightlight feature, um, and it's in the power manager, which all the modern desktop managers do have. And like Ven was saying, the fractional scaling, it's wonderful because not only is it pre, uh, predefined like 1x, 1.5, and 2x, you can customize the size as well and that's in the display dialogue so that's pretty huge that was a, a huge new feature we were all looking forward to yay <laughs> i'm gonna be on 412 for a while okay. yeah <laughs> yeah until this I gets like settled. the new icons <laughs> the, the flutter icons instead of they finally moved away from the attempt at providing depth to desktop icons no it's just an icon just make it flat and clear what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Long as uh, with with XFC for me, it's always been it's very functional. Don't care what it looks like. It's like the you know I, I don't want to see a lot of focus on like animations and just <laughs> unnecessary stuff. I I don't need anything between minimizing a window and that window not being there. <laughs> Yeah, in true Rodentia, Rodentia window manager uh, style. <laughs> Keep it simple. It works. It works. Yes. I, I, need to, I need to have 20 virtual terminals open and no hope of ever organizing them. Yeah. Then, I'm, then I'm fine. I'm like, all right, it's good. <laughs> K-disc mark. Yes, and a big yeah. thank you to Arthur in for uh, submitting this story, which you can do if you're a Patreon. More on that uh, in a bit. But yeah, this is K-Disc Mark, and if you've looked at an SSD review lately, you've probably seen Crystal Disc Mark, uh, the little screenshots with the uh, green progress bars that give you like write and read speeds uh, for the different types of uh, reads and writes that you can do. And well, this is very much attempting, uh, K-Disc Mark is very much attempting to be the open source alternative to that. There's just a problem that I found because it's like, oh, that looks really neat. I'm a download it, run it, cool, yeah, yeah. Wait a second, where's my raid? It doesn't see MD mm. raids. Mm. Why? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you pulling this information from? It doesn't see the raid. It doesn't see the two SSDs that constitute the raid. Eh? <laughs> Pedro, this is, this is a GUI utility. This is designed for people who want to look at little bars and graphs. <laughs> but it could be a very useful GUI, but it's, it's missing functionality. Maybe it should move to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know he's not already in the UK? <laughs> well, it is still a work in progress. And, you know, I usually use DD or Sysbench. That's what I've, I've used for years to uh, do benchmarking on my disks. But it, it's nice to have a really simple uh, GUI for this because there's very few of those on Linux. So that's really cool. It is. And if you're just looking for something real quick and some numbers pop up on your screen, you're like, hey, look, bars. Hey, uh, I quit caring about disk speed the second I got my first Intel SSD. SSD, yes. Like, yes. That's fast enough. I'm good. Now I have NVMe drives and yeah, I, I, I don't have any complaints. <laughs> None. Um, so, yeah. Let's talk about something I'm, I am using right here. You can kind of see it 
that little bit of the screen right there. That is Adore, and there's a new version out, 6.3. It is currently available. This is a maintenance release. Okay, more on that in a second. Uh, the big news with this release if you do any type of music, it has a built-in luff calculator, which is your overall loudness calculation. It has the uh, conformity analysis meter. So things like Spotify, Amazon Music, Deezer, YouTube, Spotify Loud, which is another option if you're a paying subscriber. Um, new mappings for a couple of brand new control surfaces, stability updates to the WebSocket in, which is something they've been working on. You know, instead of having a... Um, like physical control surface, like these are just MIDI devices. You could take a, over the web, use something like a tablet, multiple tablets to emulate this type of functionality, which I think is really neat. Uh, I tried it out. I downloaded it. It's available. Um, you can build it from source for free, but I get the prepackaged ones because I kick them a little coin every month and um, open it up, launched imported one of the uh, 5X series, that's what we're currently running, uh, show sessions, and opened up, uh, what was it, the delay plugin, just happened to double click, I'm like, well, did they change anything? And this is like the built-in Adore, like from the Adore team, immediately spite crashed. And <laughs> that was the last I saw of the Adore 6.3 because I can't have that at all. Um, mm. I'm gonna say for like live mixing, if stability, is mission critical for you? I'm sure you already know this. 6X, there be dragons um, that are just not there with 5. And 6 is a little more uh, resource intensive compared to 5. So also mm -hmm. I can't disable um, plug-in delay compensation from launching. And I was told because reasons. Uh, so I can't really use it yet. That's the thing. Uh, go play with it. Uh, if you're wondering if you want to make some mad tracks, Pedro, don't you want to make some mad tracks? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> I did toy around with music making applications uh, a long, long time ago. Um, even helped uh, <laughs> someone in university like get the basics of that old software that I had used because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, and he said, oh, I get it, and then he went off to do his thing so mm. he hasn't it's become massively program. popular that i'm aware of so. <laughs> i use it as a digital mixer i use it as multi-track recorder if you're looking to make some like um spicy beat boop music check out q tractor they just had a monthly release mm -hmm. that's also good to play with mm -hmm. and uh yeah make some cool stuff man so uh yeah okay we're just gonna keep the audio train rolling Yep. <laughs> this one is uh, also control. And well, if you've been listening to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays or Linux Gamecast Weekly for a while, chances are you know about Pavu Control. Uh, that's the first thing Ven says to anyone he meets is like, install Pavu Control. Uh, it's not exactly. a, I'm only slightly it exaggerating really on that. my podiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only slightly exaggerating, but uh, yeah, this is also control. Uh, if you're looking at the screenshots, it's like, oh, that, that looks a lot like Pavu control. Yes, it does. <laughs> that is exactly the point here. And well, if you are determined to keep anything that Leonard Pottering has ever created off of your system, be it System D, Pulse Audio, uh, whatever uh, System D, Home D comes out, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, this is uh, very much what you're looking for because it gives you similar functionality to Pavu Control. Uh, Jack apparently uh, can also interface with it, but there are dragons here too. Uh, specifically, the two examples that the developer points out, it was Terraria and Firefox not playing any audio if they don't see Pulse Audio. Well, it's uh, it's not just those two, especially when it comes to games. Uh, any kind of native game that doesn't use SDL2 or even basic SDL uh, 1.2, that like recent games, that's probably not gonna work. Proton, yeah, that uses SDL too because F audio. Uh, so you're probably okay with that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is really cool because it's it's basically it's Pavu control, but for Elsa, which is really nice. And there is, like, since I collect uh, vintage and old systems, 
that's that's very helpful for for some of the old computers because uh, sometimes pulse audio acts up on those old machines because it's a little more resource heavy so <laughs> i can see this being very good for those <laughs> This is pretty neat. Uh, no pulse, no problem. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, everything is using also. Everything sits on top of also because also yeah. sits in the kernel. And um, that is the advanced Linux uh, sound architecture. And this will just let you tango with it one on one. And I will say, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't even like messing with also and setting up like device profiles because I also, the second you start doing that, you understand why Pulse Audio came out, you know, <laughs> littered, good on you because yeah. you can tango with Pulse. <laughs> it, it's like you're dealing with machine level stuff. I'm like what? This does this is not human readable. I mean, it is, but barely. So I'm <laughs> glad to see something like that now yay <laughs> something i brought up on multiple occasions is keyboards i like keyboards um i like a keyboards quiet <laughs> and i like them wireless and most importantly mm -hmm. i like them split because my hands aren't going to be like arthritis they've got enough arthritis that i'm right now um but by the time i get to the home i still want to be able to tippity tap so i'm always on the lookout for something that is not a giant rectangle and loud, which, you know, I, I understand the kids are <laughs> like, oh man, so good. Let's talk about key CB, man. It's a split keyboard. It's two PCBs and it's effectively an SMD controller and it's running rust because why not? 2020, man. <laughs> Check it out. It's only a keyboard, no LED, no display. Let's stop that. Let's get some pictures. Um, nothing more than keys and USB. I'm down with that, man. Uh, no blink. Yay. Speaking of rust, uh, looking at that, that would probably survive ex precisely one T mishap. What do you think, Pedro? I don't <laughs> think it would even survive the one, but you'd probably not like that one as pictured because those are blue switches. Exactly. Those are the clicky ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the mechanical keyboard you don't want, Ben. <laughs> Th that's the really loud clicky one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you can't replace the keys on this? Oh, no, you can. Um, oh, so it was they, a stump point to bring up. Got it. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm just giving you a fact, hard he, time. He yeah. brings well, it up, says, uh, I, yeah, brings up Cherry the MX. two kinds of mechanical switches. <laughs> yeah. Cherry MX and the, the Kill Choclo profile blue switches. Yeah. Well, my joke spoiled, but um, yeah, there's a thing. <laughs> you can get it for 60 euro. <laughs> well, you, you can get the stuff for 60 euros. Pedro, I have faith. You gotta you. put you it can together yourself. Together. Yeah, you get a little TRS cable. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about it is it's not wireless. I, I, I don't mm. want to live like some primitive with the <laughs> cords on my desk. How hard would it be to add a Bluetooth module? <laughs> Who would use Bluetooth? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, it's already using Rust. You're probably not going to tell the extra latency. <laughs> But <laughs> I can hear the click before it shows up on the screen. It's not right, Pedro. Yes. I can't live with that. <laughs> now, Van, you could probably you know modify it and get get uh, red or brown switches. That'll that will be a little quieter. But this is cool. I think this is a cool project. <laughs> I think it's a nice project, and you can absolutely swap it out for something that doesn't click at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could go for the, That's the, whole the point Cherry of it. MX Silent. They they yes. make those. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> we, we, we want to buy individual keys. Why have to hold I, I love the idea. I, I just love it. I'll, I'll just replace the one switch with a, a really loud blue one and yeah. a sea of quiets. Just make the one really loud one. It's like click. <laughs> there you go. I don't know how I feel about the necessity of having a TRS cable, a big chunk it, but I understand it's like the aesthetics thing, but I don't know. If, yeah. if you think that's bizarre and a little bit sideways, go to the Reddits and visit our mechanical keyboards. <laughs> that rabbit hole doesn't have a bottom. <laughs> if you truly think that, you're like, ah, oh, man, I have some weird hobbies. Nah, <laughs> they got you. Beat. They got you. Beat. Yeah, don't go on Reddit at all. If you think that, you'll have your all of your dreams just 
Reddit. Smashed. Reddit's a beautiful, <laughs> fantastic place. You just have to pick and choose. And, you know, if you walk into like some of the dumb parts of Reddit, like any other site, like Twitter, if you follow a bunch of dumb people, like, how oh, it makes me so, I was like, quit following the stuff that makes you angry. But, but, and see, you just want to be angry. That's all it is. <laughs> we don't and like if you to be can angry. deal with that. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, if you would like to help us be non angry, uh, you can do that by joining us, uh, financing what we do. Kick us a buck a week. We would very much appreciate it. You can do that at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That is our sole source of funding. Now, I have to say that because if I brought up that we had Amazon affiliate links, Amazon would be like, don't say anything about that, which I won't. And I'll leave it up to you to figure out uh, why they wouldn't uh, want us to say anything. But we do have uh, like eBay links and stuff like that. <laughs> PayPal, Bitcoin, all the fun metal stuff. Yay. I'm pretty sure we got Bitcoin. Um, yes. Yeah. It was there last time I checked, so <laughs> unless something happened. <laughs> or be super awesome. Uh, share the show. All that. That's great. Just show up. Come say hi. Um, yeah. That's it. That, that, that's our plug. Oh, I don't know. Buy yay, this mattress. <laughs> this is not a buy mattress. But buy one it. share merch. Yeah, buy it. We have shirts. <laughs> yeah. Store.linuxgamecast.com. Shirts. Stickers align your um, very barren um, <laughs> Pine Book Pro with some LGC stickers. Now, I, know exact, people. I know exactly where you're going to go. And do not test or do not test LGC apparel on laptops. That's inhumane. Aww. <laughs> and it most certainly will not fit. So, no. <laughs> Depending on how many stickers you already have there. <laughs> And and depending on how big your laptop off. is. <laughs> I still want that. Uh, I think it's a 21 inch Dell top um, that Dell made. Yeah. <laughs> it made some big ones. Uh, it, it was, yeah. it was so comically size, yeah. big. My brain immediately went to, I want to take that to a coffee shop. I want that, uh, you know, that surface table that Microsoft made. Or just oh, put Linux one. on yeah. it. It's like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wonder how. Wonder what happens when the touchscreen driver just dies on you. Like, right. <laughs> now, admittedly, the driver just died out of shame being run on a Microsoft product, but <laughs> we need to get into a slice of pie and all admit, at some point in your life, you've owned that plate. Oh, a pepperoni pie. <laughs> Ew. My grandma gave but, me two of those. Yes. When yeah, I moved those in plates with my are. <laughs> Uh -oh. I, the biggest mystery is finding the origin of these plates because it doesn't matter what country you're from or where you lived. You've had one of they exist. Yeah. Yes. Everyone had some from that brand. Yes. It's one of those facts of the world that no one knows where it came from. It just is. Yeah. It's going to be our downfall. That's, civilization's going to be taken down. It's a sleeping yeah. plate. Humanity dies and those plates are still there. <laughs> oh, God. They used to be manufactured here in SoCal. And, I, and I'm trying to remember the name. Uh, it has an M in it. <laughs> so. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Penta Hub. What is it? Melanox. Melanox? No. Okay. So. <laughs> that would have been is... an interesting <laughs> shift. <laughs> Melanox <Sorry>. plate. <laughs> no, no. You, you, can you imagine that conversation? You walk in, it's like. <laughs> Hey guys, hey guys, stop, no, stop. Guess what we're making? No, 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 no more plates. Tomorrow we're making fiber, fiber cards. Right. All right, oh. tomorrow's gonna be a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this is uh, Pentahub, Pentahub One, actually. And we had talked about the company Pentacore last fall on LWW number 195. And um, they contacted me on Twitter to let us know about their latest project which is so Penta hang on Hub so if they sent you, sent you an email was it a pentagram <laughs> yeah <laughs> penta tweet uh, i thought jordan was the only one who could deliver cancerous jokes uh, yeah. <laughs> Pedro, you, you're still in shock from it so just take your time uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is Pentahub One, which is their one-click app store for your Raspberry Pi. And this is really awesome because now you can easily and quickly install a Nextcloud instance, home assistance, Wi-Fi router, um, Internet of Things, a set-top box projects, and games instantaneously. And without all the configuration hassle and time needed to get these projects up and running, like, say, a weekend <laughs> project, now you can just 
instantly click in the app store and um, get that project you want to work on on your Raspberry Pi. It's just so cool. And uh, they have lots of people submitting projects. And of course, it's still growing because it's still fairly new. So I am really, really looking forward to playing around with this. <laughs> awesome. That's that. That's actually very nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at setting up uh, the uh, the pie hole and actually using this three uh, A, um, but I looked up. It's like Open Media mm -hmm. Vault uh, pie hole. It's like, oh, it's literally one command. Okay, uh, so I guess I can <laughs> I can yeah. try Pat the Hub on the uh, A plus now. <laughs> yeah. I I have more faith in you than you do yourself. You will find an excuse not to by next week. <laughs> it's a pretty neat project, man. Uh, go check it mm -hmm. out if uh, if you are angered, confused by such moon commands as apt. This might be for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, not. Some, Go. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes the projects require a little bit more than apt install. You have to have to sometimes even compile certain projects. So this just if makes you got to compile something on Raspberry Pi, then you need to learn about cross compiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. GCC has a lot of cross compiling packages. Oh Go God! Look at your package manager. Gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> what you cross compile at home, what you run on your Pi at home, or maybe just what you do at home on Tuesdays after 4 p.m. Tell us <laughs> about it. Send us a message. <laughs> hop over to our web zone, LinuxTeamCast.com forward slash contact. There's no bell button to smash. Nay, <laughs> it decided lack of bell buttons, but you can choose LWDW for Linux weekly, daily, Wednesday. Give us an email that resolves. We don't even necessarily need a correct one. Just make sure it's a real one. That's the wrong show. And a subject, maybe a name. <laughs> and ask a question. Give us a thought, a hint, allegation, maybe something better left unsaid, but we're going to say it anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hints, thoughts, allegations. We'll take all of those. And, uh, well, if they are teeny tiny little bits of feedback that we can fit at the end of this very show... You shall be featured right now. Yeah. That's it. No also, one decided to take us up on it. <laughs> not this week. We had some YouTube stuff, but it wasn't the quality that I wanted to bring in. So uh, if you want to drop a comment on a YouTube video, feel free. We'll get back to you. Um, but don't uh, don't keep your toes and pinkies crossed that it's going to make it to the show. It might, but there's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. But we got to get out of here. We've overstayed our welcome. So I'm going to kick on some music and roll some credits. Bleep boops. Yay. <laughs> Bleep boops. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Van and Pedro, once again. <laughs> and thank you, Jill. I mean, you've been doing this for how many episodes now? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Seven. Uh, no. <laughs> it's been more than two and a half years now, so... <laughs> So yeah, about a hundred and forty ish. Yeah, I started episodes? about a hundred and ten. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you do five more, you have to move to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. like how my allegory just uh, landed. <laughs> yes, that was good. That's how you hold on to a joke through I an entire I could go to the Raspberry episode. Pi store <laughs> by Pedro. <laughs> <laughs>